Hi, this is game eight of the 1992 candidates match between Nigel Short and Anatoly Karpov. I hope you've been following along. Uh, if not, I have all the games in chronological order in the playlist. So just click on there if you want to start from the beginning where I provide little anecdotes uh, and some background to what was going on at the time. In game eight, uh, Nigel has just come uh, off a loss in game seven. Uh, Karpov bounced back. Uh, he got a position that he wanted, uh, that he felt comfortable in. You know, a nice, stale, dry technical position. And Anatoly Karpov uh, brought home the win from a pretty much equal position uh, with the white pieces. So this had to be encouraging as uh, Short had basically been dictating the uh, tempo of the match all the way up until then. So now here in game eight, Short again has the white pieces and has a chance to uh, turn uh, the momentum around. Game started off E4 from Short as he had been playing. And now Karpov goes back to E5. Now earlier he had abandoned uh, his um, Karol Khan. Uh, you know, he was having a tremendous opening difficulty with uh, Short's advanced variation. And so now he goes back to the Rui Lopez. However, Short uh, surprised him by playing the offbeat variation, the Howell attack, with uh, 6 Queen E2. And was able to uh, defeat uh, Karpov. However, Karpov lost due to a one-move blunder. And we explained uh, how that one-move blunder... Uh, you know, should be observed in the context of the whole match is, um, instead of just looking at it as uh, one game. The fact that Karpov was under great pressure in almost every game uh, so far this match. Uh, he should have been down uh, several more points than he was, but he was able to save two miraculous uh, endgames from the Queen's Gambit accepted. Uh, one, he was dead lost, and the other, he was in a lot of trouble. And so he saved two points and was still still down by a game. So bishop e7, queen e2, and there it is again. So uh, Nigel goes right back to it, not fearing uh, Karpov uh, coming up with th some improvement in between. So castle, c3, and now d6. In game 6, Karpov had played d5, and again, that takes the game. Uh, well, it's possible to go into a Marshall-type uh, Marshall gambit play in uh, with d5. d6 is also very good. D4, Bishop G5, uh, excuse me, Bishop G4. Uh, this is part of the downside with the, you know, this type of uh, system, uh, Queen E2, is that uh, White uh, allows the Bishop pin uh, on G4. And other systems with uh, the old systems with, the other system rather with, rather with Rook E1, usually H3, D6, H3 is, is, uh, is employed. Uh, in the world system, the world attack rather, Queen E2 has the purpose of protecting the E pawn, but then taking that rook on F1 and bringing it to the D file where it opposes the queen. There it is. E takes D4, C takes D4, and now D5. So this is probably what Kar what Karpov and his team looked at in between, um, you know, in between uh, rounds well, after losing in game uh, six. E5, knight hops in, knight e into the center, A4, now short begins to probe those queen side pawns, B takes A4, bishop takes A4, and uh, now we have a target on A6, and we have this open C file for, for, um, for white to exploit also, I like white's position, I like these kind of positions where um, black is just saddled with uh, some weaknesses here. The knight on uh, c6 is attacked. The c7 pawn is going to need protection as well as the a6 pawn. Now white does have to worry about his own b pawn. As white can see counterplay down the uh, b file. But overall I like white. White also has a space advantage uh, on the king side. Okay. So um, to me just white's black's position. The pieces look a little bit loose. To me and the structure in general a lot of weak squares for instance c5 uh, is, is um you know accessible uh to white um 
and, and it's just uh the overall you know the like it reminds me of an open Roy Lopez and I don't like that position at all. This this position provides good opportunities for White. It's easy to play to, to uh, pile up on the C file, uh, work against those pawns on A6 and C7, and also to kick that knight out of uh, E4 with a move like F3 when or when the time comes. Knight b4, this takes care of the, the uh, knight for now. h3. Bishop h5. So that, that answers the question of the bishop. So now the bishop will not be returning to the queen side. Knight c3. And now bishop g6. Because again, um, Karpov had to worry about this knight on e4. What to do with it. It has to stay where it's at. There's really nowhere for it to go right now. Bishop e3, okay, and this kind of works against, you know, against the move c5, although black can play it, rook b8, getting on the b file, and now here's an important move, um, let me uh, say that short and Anand, and um, this comes from one of Anand's books, um, my great, I think it's my greatest games, I, I can't remember which book it was, but um, Anand had actually worked for uh, worked with Short in Athens uh, during this time in '92, and it was like a one you know one shot deal. And working together in this position, they came up with the concept that this knight on B4 was the uh, key. The black knight on B4 was the key to the position, um, and it was counterintuitive because to them, because usually you would think that the centralized knight that knight on e4 right was more dangerous and so therefore you would try to organize your play around getting rid of that knight uh, for example but however they had concluded that it was better that the knight on b4 was the key to uh, black's position and uh, it's hard to disagree with them because again the queen side pawns for black are weak the a and c files are what uh, white wishes to dominate, and so getting rid of getting rid of that annoying knight allows white uh, more scope to operate on the queen side. So therefore, Nigel unleashed the move knight a2. Okay, and Karpov plays c5. D takes c5. So now he gets rid of. Uh, the weakness on the C file, but now the isolated isolated pawn appears on the D file. So he robbed Peter to pay Paul. So knight takes C, C5. Knight takes B4, getting rid of that knight. Uh, rook takes B4. And now bishop C6. Excellent move um, by short. Uh, maintaining the initiative. And now the attack is on a new target. And that's the D5 pawn. Queen b8, piling up against the b2 pawn. And now short plays the move, bishop takes d5. Uh, possible was just maintaining the pressure, playing rook a2, preserving the b pawn. Okay, and then basically asking uh, white, excuse me, asking black, how are you going to defend your d pawn? There's really no adequate way to defend it. After bishop e4, uh, the pawn can be captured, and also after rook d8. Okay, so rook d8. Play can go, bishop takes c5, bishop takes c5, and then rook takes d5. Alright, so either way, uh, white would come out with the extra pawn. <clears throat> so after queen b8. He took bishop, he took his booty and ran with it. Bishop takes d5. That was meant by rook takes b2. Queen to c4. All right, so now um, Nigel is not so much concerned about the pawn, so to speak, on the queen side, but just playing against the pieces, the loose pieces in the area. Karpov plays rook c2. Now better was probably to add this other rook in the game by playing rook c8. That could have been meant by rook ac1 and uh, white 
uh, still uh, for choice here. But rook c2 attacks the queen right away and it's a tempting move. However, the queen has a good square to go to and now goes over to the king side and queen with queen g4. Queen c7 is played. And this move right here allows the shot knight d4. Now that rook that was standing so proud on c2 uh, has to move. Rook c3. Now knight c6. Strong move, um, powerfully um, attacking this bishop right here, but protecting this pawn on e5, which uh, the black queen was attacking earlier. Rook e8. And now bishop d4. Just uh, getting the pawns, excuse me, getting the pieces set uh, for the assault on the king side. Remember earlier how I was saying there was the weak pawns on the queen side for black on the A and C files, but with the space advantage, right, with the pawns on uh, pawn on E5 and D4 at the time, white also have the option to attack on the king side. So as black is distracted defending over on the queen side, white switches the attack over. So rook C2. Knight b4. So now again, this switching over to the uh, queen side, attacking the rook and the pawn on a6. Rook d8, and um, Karpov just simply decides he has to part with the uh, with the rook on c2. If he tries to um, save it somehow, and it's just amazing how this piece is all jammed up here. But say. Let's just move it here for argument's sake. And just queen, queen e2. There's nowhere, nowhere, uh, no good squares for the, the rook to go. Okay, so just, just, um, short, again, short, really had Karpov's number in this match. It's amazing, too, because Karpov actually has a plus score against short before this match and after the match. Uh, but for some reason... He was just totally demolished in this match, in this time period. Um, somebody even said the match was was uh, rigged because they didn't want another Karpov uh, Kasparov match. That's probably another video altogether, right? To investigate that allegation. But um, like I said, if you look at the results before the match and after the match, I mean Karpov is just like after the match, Karpov just simply continued, you know his. Uh, you know, not not domination, but he you know he he scored better than he outscored short like afterward. But hey, uh, so anyway, rook d8 is played. The rook the rook goes and Karpov is is busted here. Bishop takes c2, and short, you know, just unleashes the power of the bishops with e6. Look how beautifully they're cent uh, centralized. And again, this game is a great example of switching attacks from the queen side to the king side and back and forth. So now the attack is on on the king side. E takes f7, king h8, rook e1, bishop g6, desperately trying to defend, rook e8, rook takes, short queens, the bishop has to take, and now bishop takes c5. Removing the defender of e6 is important, and you'll see why after this move. Queen e6 and Karpov resigned. And this game right here, game eight, actually effectively clinched the uh, the match for Nigel Short. So once he won game eight, again, you know, his mate threatened right here. Uh, once once Nigel Short won this game, uh, England knew that they had somebody uh, going uh, for the world championship. Going to play for the world championship against Gary Kasparov. And um, so, again, amazing, amazing game. Good preparation by Short. Um, and it's hard to, you know, you don't want to take credit from Short, but Karpov looked unrecognizable in this match. You know, it's, just, it's, it's amazing to me. So I give credit to Short for making him look unrecognizable. Um, so it's hard. I don't know if, you know, how much credit to give to short and how much to take away from Karpov, but it's just, un, un, you know, unbelievable. Um, you know, like for instance, I can't imagine that happened to Kasparov. Like even when Kasparov lost to, um, Kramnik without, 
even without winning a game, it he it was like those games were different because it was like he wasn't Kasparov wasn't getting blown out of the water. You know, like he lost a few, you know, like some tough, you know, tough endings and, and such like that, if I remember correctly. But he wasn't just getting demolished by Kramnik. You know, it was a lot of close games, close games. And ultimately, uh, Kramnik uh, wound up winning two. And I think he could have won a couple of more, but they were all hard fought games. Whereas in this match, it just seems like, you know, Karpov was just getting just overran. So anyway, that is it. We got one more uh, game to look at. Uh, and this it'll conclude our, our series uh, on this uh, match, and I hope you've been in, enjoying. It. I've been trying to do a little research and find out, you know, what was going on, who was complaining, who was crying about conditions, and all of that stuff like that, and um, you know, just kind of keep the the history alive a little bit. So I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you on the next video.